the red flag flag here. Hi, my name is Tom Rayside, and this is my contribution to the socialist think tank's 12 Days of Solidarity. I think for us all on the left, you'd be correct to think that the last two festive periods, this one included, have been tough for us all. The only thing to remind us that it is that time of the year again, really has been the dark and long nights. And for many of us, this feeling I'm sure has extended beyond winter and has become an integral part of this past year. But amongst these dismal reminiscences, a space has opened up for us to reflect on our past collective experiences of hope, triumph and dreams. Even though it feels like a million light years ago, I regularly think about the magic of the 2017 general election. I remember the moment of being in, in what was to be Laura Peacock's office when the For the Many manifesto was leaked. The feeling of being overjoyed and besides myself at reading unapologetically socialist commitments to nationalise public assets, abolish tuition fees, reintroduce maintenance grants and commitments to build social housing and promises to public inquiries such as the events at Orgreave. After being in the party through the dismal years, where a previous leadership promoted immigration mugs, posed with photo shoots of Murdoch on rags, and stood by Tory welfare cuts, I remember how everything we had been fighting for up to that point was in that For the Many manifesto. Compared to where the discourse was it from just two years previously, it should be looked back on as a revolutionary moment achieved through people's powered politics. Although it wasn't to be, and after getting so close in the 2017 general election, to be followed up by the heartache of last year's general election, which turned out to be so much more worse than any of us could have seen, I regularly reflect on the Tony Benn quote, that where in defeat we must draw inspiration from the courage of people who fought the battle that it was their job to fight. And the truth is on the left, that that courage can be found in each and every one of us. It's only natural that many of us would have questioned ourselves, and I certainly have, asking, could I have done more? And why do we put ourselves through the struggle? On this, it's okay to acknowledge how much the general election and its subsequent fallout has taken out of us. It left me feeling exhausted. And in the end, I reached out to receive counsellor. Over the past year, who could have foreseen the circumstances and where we are today? COVID-19, but to compound matters, the, criminal, the criminally negligent response from Boris Johnson and the complete, almost purposeful lack of response from Keir Starmer. It's in this context, our socialism and top solidarity becomes more important than it has ever done before. Back at the tail end of the summer, I was fortunate to sit down, socially distanced of course, with Jeremy Corbyn. And he told me about what his and his Islington's response was to the first wave. Central to it was community organising. Jeremy told me that it was about making socialism part of people's everyday lives. He said, he told me this, for a lot of people who thought the will was their oyster living in London and doing really well, suddenly to be told to work at home where all of the jobs had become very temporary, this led many people to start to volunteer in food banks. Suddenly, learning about local communities and it's changed and that memory is not going to go away. When he asked Jeremy about what he saw beyond COVID, remember this was in September, he replied, community solidarity. Going forward, as dismal as things may seem in the Labour Party, I reflect hope and optimism in the collective experiences being forged in the face of hopelessness and destitution. When I see some of the reckless behaviour we have witnessed from senior figures in today's a new leadership party, which I'm convinced has been done to demoralise the spirit of the membership, I think of this quote from socialist singer Victor Hara in his work, Vignetos del Pueblo, The Winds of Change. And he quotes this. Now I want to live beside my son, daughter, sister and brother, working together on a new springtime for us all. You can't scare me with your threats, you masters of misery. The star of hope continues to be ours. Looking ahead, nothing can take away our collective solidarity forged through experiences which our opponents could never comprehend or understand. 
the star of hope truly does belong to us. Thank you very much. Solidarity, comrades. We'll keep the red flag flagging here.